Who said you have to play window or ticket booth? Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be looking at A-Sight Mirage and how Fallen and Phelps play it. So I'm going to start off by highlighting this position by Fallen and all the options that are around it. So obviously he's open to Palace here, but not A-Main, but he does know the other team has a heavy presence in mid, which is why I really like this play. So you'll see he's, he's looking, he's obviously got the up and lower angle hits, a nice flick shot. He's able to fall back now and get this shot onto the A-Main player, knowing they're probably going to be going for some kind of A-Split, and you'll see it works out really well for him. Now the reason I like this angle is it's less exposed to A-Main uh, as the ticket booth angle might be. Obviously the ticket booth angle, you're only looking at connector, but uh, I think it's better not to be exposed to A-Main as you're more likely to get dry peaked out there than from Palace in this situation. Now obviously if you're playing more random low level of play, you can get one of your teammates to watch Palace while you uh, use that angle to look onto connector and that could be a really powerful crossfire. So sticking with Fawn and his AWP, I like this play here aggressive at the start of a round. So he'll Molotov uh, instead of smoking off the A main and you'll see a double double peak with Fur. They'll clear out the right hand side and then he comes back and holds this aggressive angle. You'll see he gets that first peak, uh, no one's really expecting it, more of an off angle. And he's able to just disappear underneath the palace kind of area onto the default box. And the reason I like this play is it's really aggressive off angle but there's lots of uh, ways he can fall back. And you'll see his teammates have him covered from palace which is the main danger here is someone pushing out palace and trading him off. Which doesn't happen, he flashes himself back in and he's actually re-peaking it now. So here's one more uh, individual thing that I look at before I, uh, I talk about more dealing with executes and stuff. So you'll see here Phelps is missing all his shots and he knows they're going to be pushing CT spawn because that's the only real option here. So he throws this nice little flash and um, he's able to come back in. He's missing all the shots but it doesn't matter, he gets the kill. He does get traded off in the end but that's just something you can try out because I know in uh, most levels of play uh, it's often a tactic to push CT spawn and uh, that's a nice little way you can catch him off guard and probably get yourself a couple of easy kills. So you see here, Team Liquid are about to execute onto the A site with our fur under Palace. Interestingly, he has all the utility on this uh, pretty poor buy from SK, but for some reason he's the one playing aggressive. So he's in there getting aggressive. You see he doesn't really get anything done. He gets Molotov'd out. Uh, Cold pushes through that smoke to apply some extra pressure, while Fur's, um, I mean Phelps, sorry, is, is putting a lot of pressure on from CT as it's not smoked off, as their plan was clearly to push the CT spawn and gain some extra control there. Because, um, as most of us know, A site's really hard to hold uh, after plant, quite easy to retake when the other team has utility, so they need that extra control of CT to give themselves a chance. SK know this, uh, Cold pushes through quite smartly and it really sets everything up for Phelps, it's not so much about him playing for himself. So often SK like to play just pure retake, just getting as many picks as possible as the T site enters the enters the A site and just letting them plant and then retaking with the man advantage. But in this situation I decided to put fur under uh, under palace, sorry. Now, the reason for this is, I think, is because they're not as confident in their retake in this particular round. As you notice, they have uh, little utility. I think Taka only has a CZ, a um, couple of flashes and stuff. So they put him here to try and maybe get them the man advantage early, apply some pressure. It doesn't work out. He gets them all tolved out. Uh, nice execute by Liquid in that regard, sorry. But um, but you see here, the idea for this is, is probably... Um, not truly really catch a team off guard. I mean, this is always checked. It's not an off angle or anything. I think they were hoping for um, some kind of a team team to flash him in. So say um, one of the connector players can just throw a flash. That was a pretty bad one, but you get the idea. A flash that'll pop behind him, and he's going to be able to pop out and get one or two. And I think this is the way our palace should be played. It shouldn't be a passive position. It should be more of a uh, more of an active uh, peaking position. Well, you can come out and just peek these angles with the flash, um, have the teammate Molotov off Palace or something, and yeah, really need to, to get him going. As you see, if you're just sitting under Palace, I and mean, that situation gets Molotov'd out, so he's in a really bad position. But even if you're playing an angle like this, you're going to um, probably get checked in the end at some point, and maybe a maximum of one kill. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. You see uh, Cold Zero, he's taking the aggression. Fallen gets this pick on Palace, and you see Zero to peek out. He's going to peek out before he saw Taz, and you see, look, he's, the flash comes in. See how blind he is? He just misses the shots. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Take the fight to them in these aggressive situations. Get your teammates to flash you in, and you see that works out a lot better with them all peeking together. Now, if the execute does come in, it can be harder to peek together, but of course, you can still throw that flash, give him a better chance to get those couple of picks before he goes down. So this final round here is the most common way that SK will play the ace. So they'll play a full retake with no one on the actual side itself, only people at stairs and like Phelps here in CT. So you'll see here, um, initially Fur gets caught with one of his nades out. you see he's about to throw his nade and he gets picked off, just bad timing. Now Phelps plays this angle, a very strong angle, a common angle, but still a headshot angle that you can use really well. You see he hits some nice shots and ends up taking the team down. So they're in a 4v3 now, they're, they're happy with this. I mean, they can let him plant, 
you notice no one's really peeking. Fawn goes back into the connector knowing that uh, most likely they're either going to push somewhere or they're going to have a lurker coming in. And it ends up being that they try and push somewhere. He turns around at the right time, catches them off guard. You see Cold and Phillips here, just happy happy playing together. He knows they're trying to try and push. They, they can't plant the bomb this situation. Cold's able to trade and, and that's really it. So basically as a rule of thumb, after watching SK, I'd say if you have good utility, your team has good mollies, good flashes, good uh, smoke grenade usage, a few of them left. It's just play outside the A site and be happy to retake it with um with an equal equal man advantage or or whatever and just be happy to retake it. Obviously if it's a 2v4 you need to do something crazy, but if you've got a 4v4 going, be happy to retake the A site. Uh, unless of course you want to do something SK often does, uh, not often, but they'll do it from time to time, is they'll send two guys walking to A main, maybe um Fur and Phelps or whatever, and they just clear out these angles together and try and gather the information or, or catch a player off guard, maybe lining up a smoke or something. And that's a way they'd like to get the information if they're down a man or they feel like they just want to mix things up a little bit. Um, besides that, there's not really much to the A site. One thing uh, Fallen does like to do is obviously if he's got his normal smoke, which he, he comes back and he, he throws from there, I think. I don't, I don't really throw the one that he throws, but you get just the normal A main smoke. But one thing he will often do is he'll come up to this box, uh, start of a round just for a little bit more aggressive. You just aim at the, the bottom line here, just above this pole anyway. It doesn't like, it's not, it's pretty general. You just aim like that. And you see this is just a little bit of a deeper smoke. And this just keeps the T's guessing as to what exactly you're doing. Uh, something to just mix it up a little bit. Um, don't let the T side get too comfortable that you're smoking up A main every round. That's it for Mirage and A site guys. Actually one of the harder videos to make because it is all about retake and, and playing that kind of game. But as some of you might have realised, I reached a 1,000 subscribers the other day, which I was pretty happy about. So just to say thanks to you guys, I'm going to give away this M4. It's nothing huge. I'm not rich. No sponsors or anything. But to enter the giveaway, just comment your trade URL and like the video. And of course, you have to be subscribed to mine. Also, uh, check out my Twitter in the comments. Um, that's not part of the giveaway, but if you follow me, that would be greatly appreciated as well. And that's it, guys. Thanks.